We're in the village of Honington and this is the church of all saints. There's a road going round it, houses and a flint wall. A very typical and picturesque village church. Got a stone and flint porch, tile roof, a flint tower with a brick staircase that, uh, or the brick structure that houses a staircase, I would think. Was that added later? I guess it must have been. Looks as if there's cleaning going on in the church at the moment. Little square windows at this side and a small door at the back of the church. The churchyard is very neat with old headstones spaced sparsely around. Two headstones right at the back of the church here, underneath the big rear window of the church. James Egan died November 16th, 1898, aged 47 years. Johnson Hall, Gedgem. He died in 1870. He was the rector at that time. Now Honington is a village which houses a large air base and it looks perhaps as if we've got graves that have a military connection. Back of the church has got additions to it. A buttress which looks as if it was added to help support the wall. A fairly recent concrete block extension maybe an oil tank and another extension at the back which is flint and stone this was a pilot so these are military graves a beautiful row of white headstones and many more on the other side. There is an additional graveyard at the back of this and there again I believe that there's more military graves there. These are more ancient end of the 19th century or Victorian I would think. We come under a beautiful tree. It's not a particularly sunny day today but on a sunny day this would be an attractive place to walk into. But we've got rows and rows here of more recent headstones. But here we have Loving memory of Catherine Florence Maudsley Illingworth, who died the 4th of February 1972, aged 81 years. And also Mabel Illingsworth, who died the 5th of October 1977, aged 86 years.
lovely view of the church here. Gravel path to the porch, which is, as I say, stone with three little stone um, flint, but with three little alcoves there. I guess maybe they would put candles, perhaps, at, at times there. Be nice, maybe in festivals. A wooden door with metal again. That's lovely. A lovely little porch. Wooden ceiling, and we've got plain white leaded glass each side and the walls have been painted at some time so they have a lovely mellow creamy color against the stone that's really beautiful and now a fabulous fabulous arch fabulous big arch and a well-worn brick floor and then we step down into this church which has got carpet running down the walkways, covering the stone and tiled floor. Now here's a lovely font. There's a visitor's book, we'll have to sign that in a minute. There's some books here. Oh, and look, right in front of us is a beautiful organ. There again, it looks to me as if this would be an Edwardian organ. And so we've got memorials to the side, to each side actually. Let's have a look. And holders here, perhaps for candles. And this window is plain leaded and it's letting a lot of light in as are the other windows. It hasn't got as many windows as some churches, but because they're large and plain glass, the light is just streaming in. And with the walls in a painted cream, the church is so bright, it seems bigger than it is. And a beautiful alcove here with a door and flower arrangement. That's fabulous. We've got a memorial here. In loving memory of Robert Bloomfield, the Suffolk pastoral poet, who was born in Honington on December the 3rd, 1766, and who died at Bloomfield House, Shefford, Bedfordshire, on August the 19th, 1823, aged 57 years, and he rests in Campton Churchyard, Bedfordshire. That's lovely. And from what we understand, he lived in a house across the road from this church. So hence the memorial. So coming in from the main door, and we walk up to the altar area. And to our left here, we've got a very lovely stained glass window. Now that's, that's very nice. That's seemingly quite modern, almost Art Nouveau in appearance. That's lovely. And it doesn't restrict the light. Lovely blue glow at the top. The arch is beautiful because it's, it's not a, too gothic. There's an alcove and another area here which obviously something had been there at some time in the past perhaps a stove maybe that was where there was a pipe going up got the pulpit which is quite low here and a lovely view of the church from the pulpit area ceiling is clean and smooth wood. Altar area here has got some older pews. With lovely carvings. 
different creatures on them. I understand these were more original with the church, where some of the others had been taken elsewhere. This is a beautiful memorial, beautiful memorial. Little door here. And above this glorious flower arrangement, we've got another memorial. In memory of Mary and Suzanne, the daughters of Robert Rushbrook, Esquire, and Susanna, his wife, who lie interred beneath their affectionate nephew, Robert Rushbrook, Esquire, of Rushbrook Park, has erected this tablet, A.D. 1820. That's an interesting monument again, because we see a connection with the Rushbrook family who were involved in the estate just north of Bury St. Edmunds. So the family had extensive ties around the county by the look of it. Now the window at the altar is not stained glass, but it's plain, but has a slight yellow tint and it's the reason this area is so light and bright. On this side we've got a little alcove and another bright sunny window. Here's a brass, we don't know the history of it. It's an old brass that's been set into the wall. And the work on these walls is wonderful. The plastering against the stone and it's all painted. So well cared for, so well done. Before we leave the altar area, we've just spotted an old memorial here for somebody who died. Here lies the body of Anne Curtis the wife of Augustine Curtis, gent who deceased the 15th day of February, 1585. Well, that's quite an old memorial. And gent is a name that we yet again have seen and heard in this area, in the churches. What a beautiful little village church. I think this is one of the cleanest and sweetest ones we've seen. The flowers arrangements there little, around that memorial. This is the 1939-1945 war and that's the Great War of 1419. It out to me um, some information regarding the brass that's set in the wall. We'll see if we can see this with the camera. And that's the story. And also it was mentioned that this is a recent um, stained glass window. As I thought it was new. It is recent and it represents scenes of the local village. That's why I'd never seen one like it. It's truly beautiful. Porch from this most beautiful of churches. I just can't tell you how beautiful I felt it was to be inside this church. Lucky to have churches like this and villages like this. Oh, it's so glorious to be living in this county of Suffolk. <laughs>